Hi everybody, my name is Purity Lunar, and today I am going to be talking about a topic that um, wasn't necessarily requested. This is a question that I actually get asked a lot by not only friends but family members, um, and sometimes just other people on social networking and other forms. So. Um, the topic I'm going to be talking about is whether or not your child should be playing Second Life. Um, I feel like this is a very important topic for me to be talking about because um, oftentimes a lot of parents will trust what their kids are saying about a game and they will go ahead and play it. Um, what's difficult about Second Life in general is they don't necessarily have a uh, rating system. Like, um, let's say you go and buy a game like Call of Duty for your child. If you looked on the front of it, it would be able to tell you what the game is rated. Um, I haven't really been able to find a um, direct rating for it, but I'll get a little bit into ratings here in just a moment. Um, another thing that I wanted to say is, uh, I think about almost a year ago, I did a, I wrote a review on the Common Sense Media regarding Second Life, and what was really strange is, um, it made a lot of my fellow Second Life players really angry, um, I'm not entirely sure why, I was just basically explaining the kind of things that happen in this community and um, the dangers of it sort of thing and basically how it's not meant for kids and for some reason this <laughs> touched a lot of hot spots with these people. Um, from what I'm telling you today, this is some information from Linden Labs itself and this is also some personal experiences that I've had over my few years of playing. So I'm going to be reading some points off of a note card so I might stop frequently in between just so I know to touch really important topics and I want to be sure that you know what Second Life is about before you let your child play this game. Another thing I wanted to go about saying is this video contains some really sensitive topics and if there are children in the room um, it's best to be using headphones or watching this video when there's no children present. So, um, because the topics that are going to be mentioned are for adults, and this brings me to my point on why kids shouldn't be playing it, so I'm going to get started. So the first topic that I wanted to talk about is sex and violence in Second Life. The first point I wanted to make in regards to that is try to explain the rating system inside of Second Life the best that I can. So I will also be providing a link down in the description box to explain a little bit more about the rating system and how it's used, um, but I'm going to explain it to you the best of my knowledge. So the way Second Life is set up is um, they, when you log into the grid, um, by default, when you make a new account, your rating system is set at general, uh, and there's three types of ratings. There is G for general, M for moderate, and A for adult. G is supposed to be a family-friendly, kid-friendly location that um, your avatar can visit. So this might be a playground, this might be a shopping mall um, that doesn't contain any adult content, so this could be... Um, a shopping center for books or clothing, um, stuff like that. Uh, moderate means that I, I compare it to about PG-13. Um, there may be some offensive content, but not enough to the point where there would be um, sex or nudity. There might be uh, moderate swearing allowed, there might be people who are half-dressed, um, it really all depends. Um, this might be a location where people get together like a club or a, um, like a, a dance club kind of thing. Um, then there is A-rated, which is adult, and in these locations are where, um, depending on where you go, um, nudity is allowed, um, sex is allowed, 
cursing is allowed, um, stuff like that. So when you make your account, um, by default, it's on a general rating. So if your child was to try to visit an adult location, um, he or she would automatically be kicked out of that place and, or wouldn't be able to visit it at all. Um, however, <clears throat> these settings can be easily manipulated. Um, the reason this, these ratings don't actually help a parent is um, if you are a busy parent, if you're working, and you're one of those parents that can't always watch over what your child's doing on the internet, um, they can easily go into their viewer settings and change those themselves. It does not require a password, so if you were thinking that you had to set up a password to change the ratings, that's not true. So they could easily manipulate that so they could visit adult sims. Um, sims stands for a location, basically a simulator. Um, so the rating system is just kind of something to save Second Life's butt. Um, it's not really a good uh, form of protection whatsoever. Another thing that I wanted to explain regarding this topic is the type of people that play in these locations. So um, when I was talking to you about adult locations, um, there's some people that, um, I know this is going to be a huge generalization, but um, people that go to adult sims want to do adult things most of the time. So um, if they're there for sex, then they're going to be actively looking for sex. Um, if they already have a partner, they'll more than likely be having sex. Um, sometimes people will get naked and they'll walk around with their bits hanging out kind of thing. Um, also, there are adult locations where there is violence involved, and um, or more so violent role play. Um, some of these types of violent role play will include zombie killing, um, uh, war scenes. Some of these also some of these uh, sexually related sims will also involve rape. And I know that's a very, very sensitive topic, but there are instances where people will roleplay scenes of rape. And it is very possible in this game for an avatar to take control of another avatar. Um, almost like hacking, in a way. So, if your child were to visit these sims, more than likely um, they would be exposed to a lot of this stuff. Now, also, another thing that I wanted to bring up is the age accommodation. So, if you were on an adult sim, um, you would all obviously be encouraged to be over the age of 18. Um, half of these places, um, some of, some places um, that, some of the people that own these locations have it set up where age 18 verification is required. So, that would require them to have a credit card info on file, but I'm here to tell you that not every adult location has this set in place. Um, me personally, I have a location that features my store, however, the place that I rent my land is actually on an adult location, um, however, I don't feature any adult content. Um, or any nudity or anything. It's actually supposed to be family friendly, um, so I um, it's just kind of like luck of the draw. That was all that was available to me. Um, because of that, um, I don't necessarily ask for age verification so I can go into my settings and make it so age 18 verification is not required. Um, so that's another thing that parents should keep in mind. Um, the second thing I wanted to talk about is the consumerism in the game. Now, um, the consumerism, it seems to get worse and worse and worse as time goes on. Um, People feel that the only way they can thrive in Second Life is to sell something or be a part of a community where they um, sell stuff kind of thing. So um, Second Life itself has its own currency that's a little bit similar to Bitcoin. So um, if you earn this virtual currency, which is called Lindens, you can actually use that currency to cash out into real money. and. This is something that attracts children, it seems like. Um, they feel that um, they can use their creativity to make stuff in the game or use their skills and they create, they get this money 
and they feel as if they're going to make real money off of this. So this really, really sucks kids into wanting to play Second Life. Also, it seems to me that no matter where you visit, there's always somebody trying to sell you something, whether it be a product or a service, and there are such thing as sexual solicitors in the game. Um, this also brings me back to the sex topic, is that people are allowed to give escorting services in the game. Um, they don't necessarily meet up with these people in real life, but um, these people will um, contact these escorts and they will have sexual relations via text or voice or over the webcam. Um, also there is such thing as adult furniture, like you see the chair that I'm sitting in right now. Um, some of these uh, pieces of furniture have adult sex positions in it and when sit upon they can choose to get in sexual positions so that's another way that um, people can act sexually um, in inside of the game. Um, so yes, escorting does in fact exist inside of Second Life. Um, most of the time, the a lot of the times you'll get uh, spammers that are um, essentially that mass um, message people from around the grid asking for sex and most of the time it ends up being a scam, but there's really no um, way to avoid your child getting these messages from these bots or scammers or people in general. Um, that's just the way they are. And so another thing on top of consumerism is money scams do in fact exist in this game. Um, there has been illegal things that have gone upon Second Life that will actually drain the user's bank account information and the Linden's in their account. Um, like I said, Linden's is the Second Life uh, currency, and um, if your child isn't old enough to recognize these things, more than likely they're going to accept an object from somebody, and it could quite potentially harm your computer or harm your finances, harm your finances or harm your privacy in general. Third topic that I wanted to bring up, um, a lot of parents care deeply about. I know it's a controversial subject, but. Um, the, I know that there are parents that are concerned about this, but another thing I wanted to bring up is the body image portrayal inside of this game. Now, obviously body image exists in almost any game out there, um, and uh, you you walk around the grid and you see all types of different people that look, um, some, some of them look natural, some of them don't. I mean, as you can see, I'm wearing cat ears, I mean, that doesn't really necessarily portray a negative body image, but um, other times you'll see people that are just incredibly unrealistic, um, like women with like ginormous butts and ginormous breasts and um, really, really tiny waists, and then you'll see men um, who are also affected by body image. Um, you'll see um, these huge tall men with huge muscles, and they've got their shirts off, and they their muscles are huge and they look, well, they look like the quote-unquote ideal man kind of thing. So um, it's very easy to manipulate the way that your avatar works in this game. Um, you can change absolutely anything about um, your avatar. You can even change your skin color, you can change um, your body measurements, you can change just about anything, and um, a lot of the times these definitely um, portray a negative body image for people that are younger and easily manipulated. And another thing is um, pressure in fashion also exists in this game. Um, now there are such things as getting free clothes and everything like that, but then there's also the other side of it that um, you have these big brand name fashion designers in Second Life, and um, everybody wants, it's almost like brand names like uh, Dolce and & Gabbana and uh, Coach and Gucci and everything like that. It, it exists in Second Life. There's these big brand name designers that are very famous and make a lot of money um, off of making their clothes, and um, the way that young people crave that in real life, they're going to crave that in Second Life, and they're going to be... Um, pressure to spend a lot of money and a lot of time trying to get these new um, 
these clothes and uh, look as fancy as everybody else, so that's that's something that definitely exists in this game, and um, a lot of people don't talk about it, but um, it's also kind of hard to think about, but it really does exist. It seems like everybody wants the, new, the newest clothes from the biggest fashion designers, and um, when they go walking around, people are like, oh, is that by Blueberry, or oh, is that by so-and-so kind of thing, and they want that validation. The fourth topic I wanted to talk about is the social interactions inside of Second Life. Now, I've already kind of described to you the sexual interaction aspect of it, but I also wanted to talk about people such as trollers, and people who troll, and people who fake who they are in real life. Um, this is a very common thing in Second Life. Um, people can portray um, however they want to portray themselves in Second Life. Um, sometimes we have people that will fake their age, they'll fake their gender, they'll fake their identity um, in, in, in general. Um, it's very, very, very easily to be man manipulated in this game. Um, and trollers, people that troll exist, and it happens quite often and more than it should. Um, security is very, very sparse in this game. Um, Lemon Labs does encourage people to obviously report these situations, and there's also multiple vigilante groups around the grid that help uh, bring these situations to um, get reported. Um, but if you're, your child is um, a very sensitive person, and you know that they could be prone to bullying, and it's just, Second Life is the absolute worst environment for a child to be bullied. Um, just because people can portray themselves however they like to, and it's easy for them to make themselves appear like they're this great person and beautiful person and put other people down. Also, if you, if you do a little bit of searching around on YouTube, you'll see various um, YouTubers that actually make a living off of bullying people, um, It's and they put it on YouTube, and people laugh at it. It's kind of ridiculous. I mean, um, some of them are harmless. Um, they're not that terrible, but there's people that do this kind of stuff on YouTube that are just downright cruel and nasty and just absolutely terrible to people with disabilities, to people of ethnicity, people with different religions, it's just, it, it's not cool kind of thing. So, um, that's another thing that you need to look out for. Along the lines, the other topic I wanted to talk about is the crime rate inside of Second Life. Um, uh, like I was mentioning earlier, there are people that escort, um, but Second Life also has a case, quite a few cases of pedophilia. Um, there are people that will um, harbor onto Second Life, and um, not only would, like in a chat room or social media, would they try to lure kids to them, but here's where things get really messed up. So, there are people that will dress up like child avatars. So, as you can see from looking at me, my avatar, I'm an adult woman, um, I could easily make myself a lot smaller and prepubescent and make myself look like a real child. Um, there are um, locations that I was telling you about, um, the G-rated sims, where people who do dress in child avatars can go to to try to feel safe, um, like uh, elementary schools and playgrounds and stuff like that, that are meant for people that use child avatars. Um, they expect people that use child avatars to be over the age of 18 because of this, but still, this is a serious problem. Um, there are people that will sometimes use child avatars or adult avatars, and they will lure these child avatars into doing sexual acts with them. Um, like I was telling you before, there are furniture out there that um, give you the opportunity to have virtual sex. And um, there have been cases of people who um, would dress in child-to-child -child avatar, adult-child avatar, and lure these people into sexual positions or um, se sexual interactions in general. And that type of behavior is extremely frowned upon by Linden Labs and is encouraged to be reported, but it still happens. Um, 
there's it with as many of the sick people in this world it's unfortunately going to continue to happen and I wish it wouldn't but um, it's very hard to stop a mentally insane person from doing mentally insane things um, so uh, I would definitely be worried about uh, predators luring children in to um, doing something that they don't want to do or taking control of their avatar illegally that's just something that um, parents should definitely look out for. Um, another thing that I wanted to mention is trolls will sometimes get a hold of uh, people's personal information. Um, releasing personal information about yourself in Second Life is against the rules, but <laughs> this doesn't stop people from doing it. Um, these trolls will get a hold of your personal information, let's say your name, your family's name, your phone number, your address, um, your social media accounts stuff like that and they'll go in public places and they'll do something called doxing where they will um, spam the chat with um, your personal information or they'll hold up a sign that has your name, your pictures, everything on it um, hoping that people will contact you or try to come and hurt you. Um, this is a very awful thing to happen but um, I've witnessed it personally myself. It hasn't happened to me personally, but I've seen it happen to other people, and it happens often. And um, you obviously don't want that to happen to your child um, for whatever reason, and you certainly don't want your child to witness something like this happening because they are impressionable. Now, I did try to um, make this video as short as possible. I know it's a bit long, but I feel like these are very important topics that parents should know. Um, if you want my short answer, honestly, if I had a child, I probably wouldn't want him or her to be playing um, the game under the age of possibly 16 or 18 years old. Um, it's definitely, definitely not a, uh, a community for children. Um, as much as my peers will sometimes often say that, yes, it is, it's fine, this doesn't happen, they're obviously very naive people. Um, just because if you if you're another player watching me right now and are about to spew off nonsense to me like um, you know you're probably a very naive person that doesn't get out that often and just because it personally has not happened to you does not mean that it does not happen to other people um, and I'm here to give you my uh, honest experiences and things that I know based on the terms of service um, and things I know based on um, just general rules in public and information about Second Life. So if you are a parent and you have any questions that you want me to answer, please let me know in the comment section. Um, I've also provided some more links um, down in the description box that explain a little bit more about rating systems and everything like that. And I've also uh, included a um, link to the Second Life Common Sense Media page where people have written reviews. Um, I will tell you that there are crazy people on there that say, oh no, it's fine, let your four-year-old kid play, there's nothing wrong with the game, but please don't listen to them, please don't listen to them. Um, and if you are watching my video and still thinking, no, it's fine, I'll let my kid play it, I mean, that's fine, but I really urge you to please monitor your child while playing this game. Um, I definitely would not want anything bad to happen to a child b due to this online community because it would make me feel really horrible. Um, this game gets a horrible reputation for many different things already, and that would just add to it. Okay, so like I said, any questions, please let me know, and I'll do my absolute best to answer them. Okay, thank you so much for watching.